today. I give honor to the superintendent of this wonderful body of believers. Superintendent Blackman, Lady Blackman, Bud over there. It's just so many people that I'm grateful for. My pastor, First Lady Granville. Amen. I give thanks. And I could not not say my beloved husband. Amen. I'm grateful, husband, for you. Amen. Amen. She went to the back and told me to take my time, y'all. So I'm going to be on me. Amen. And my topic today is Are You the One? Are You the One? And I'm coming from, y'all know this is a familiar scripture. Luke 17, 11 to 19. Are you the one? Yeah. Right. Amen. And I'll read. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Yes. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Mm -hmm. And one of them, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God mm -hmm. and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Yeah, come on. Amen. Amen. Where are the nine? They are not found that return to give God glory. Save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And I'm going to ask the question, Are you the one? Are you the one? We know these men, they were lepers. That meant that they had leprosy. Leprosy is a contagious disease that affects the, the, the skin, the mucous membranes, and the nervous system. Amen? Amen. 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 So they had leprosy. So they were banished from the community. They were banished, amen, from being amongst the people. Amen. amen. Are you the one? Amen. We always hear people speak about that one who came back and gave thanks. Amen. During this time of celebration, y'all know we talk about giving thanks, giving thanks, and giving thanks, right? Because we're coming up on Thanksgiving on a holiday. Amen. And everybody's going to give thanks, talk about what they're giving thanks for. But this man, he came back and he saw Jesus. But I just love the fact that before he was totally healed and delivered, he gave thanks. Yes. How many of you go back before you are totally healed, before you totally delivered, give thanks? Yes. See, he let, the Bible leaves on record that we don't have to have our total healing in order to give thanks. We don't have to have our total yes. deliverance to give thanks. Right. But I love the scripture because it lets us to know out of obedience, they did what Jesus told them to do. Oh, yeah. Jesus told them to go and to go see the priest. Go, go to him. Go, go that way. Go see the priest. Amen? Yeah. Sometimes we don't do what? Obey. Amen? Sometimes we, are, we miss the mark. Yeah. I'm guilty of it. Amen? Sometimes I don't, because I second guess what I'm hearing. I second guess the things that I want to do because I'm over 21. Amen? I have my own house. I got my own job. I got my own car. And I got my own husband. So I second guess the things of God. Are you the one? Are you the one who will go the extra mile to give God the thanks? There's so many wonderful things, so many blessings that God has bestowed upon me. And um, um, Elder Granville, I thank you for that introduction because I was like, ooh, that's me? <laughs> you know, but I just thank God. Yeah, you the one. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But I just thank God because I'm grateful for everything, the great as well as the small. Amen. I'm so grateful for 
to my new grandbaby, amen? Amen, she's 10 days old today. But I'm just so grateful because, you know, it, it's a blessing, amen? It's a blessing. I was praying for a boy, but we got another girl. But God knows I'm grateful, amen? But I thank God for what God is yet doing in the midst of his people. I look at each and every one of you all, and I see the blessings of God all over you. Are you going to give God thanks? Are you going to tell him thanks? Are you going to go back to him and give him all the honor which he's due? Give thanks unto the Lord. That's what this service is all about. We here yet to give God thanks. We here yet to give him the praise. We here yet to give him the honor. But the lepers, it was ten of them. And I have to wonder why it wasn't eight. Why wasn't it seven? Why wasn't it fifteen? But it was ten. Amen. That magical number 10. Amen. But we see here that only 10 started, but one came back. So you think about the nine that were ungrateful. Sometimes we are ungrateful, sons. Don't be that nine. Let me, let me break it down for you. What the ungrateful nine did? The ungrateful nine. Some of us, sometimes we think about it. We waited to see if it was real. I don't believe it. That ain't real. That ain't happened to me. We wait to see if it is real. Sometimes you want to see if it's going to last. I don't know if it's going to last. I don't want to go that extra mile because I don't believe it. What was man said? I'll check on Jesus later. Catch you later, Jesus. It's not fair for us to catch Jesus later. He didn't catch us later. Wow. One might have said that leprosy wasn't real. It was a figment of my imagination. I am ungrateful when I don't think about what God is doing in my life. What did the other ungrateful now man say? He would have gotten well anyway. It was on his own doing that he was healed. It wasn't about Jesus. It wasn't about what God did in my life because I did it on my own. Are you that one? Are you the one who said I gave glory to the priest? Now we know the priest can't heal us. The priest can't deliver us. The priest can't set us free. Not by Jesus. He gave him the glory which is out of order. We got to give God all the praise. He deserved the glory. That's all Oh, yeah. 
Don't be that ungrateful now. No, no, those no. lepers who did not go back and say thank you. My, my, my. God grants us mercy and he grants mercy to each and every Thank one of us. And when we get the mercy and we get granted favor, we gotta go back and say, Lord, I thank you. That is a dying word. Those two words are a dying word in this time of season. I work with ninth through 12 grade students. And do you know they never say thank you? I demand that they say thank you to me. You got a pencil? That's what they say to me. You got a piece of paper, mother? Now I'm older than half their mothers, I believe. You are not gonna talk to me any kind of way. You are not gonna sit there and play with me like I'm your peer. So I stand my ground with them. Some are bigger than me, they wider than me, all kinds of stuff. But I tell them, I give them the paper and I say, look, and I won't release it until they say the two magic words. Thank you. We gotta teach our young people say, it's all about what we teach. This right here, what the children did, that is the beginning of what we need. So they can come back and say, thank you. Thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. Thank you, pastor. Thank you, mother. They can come back and say thank you because this is the beginning of them. Amen? Amen. Jesus told the ten lepers to go to show themselves to the priest. Because if the priest had to give them the authority to say, yes, you can come on. He had to give them a stamp of approval. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Are you the one who's going to go back and say thank you? Amen. My husband give me the, uh, give me the sign. <laughs> he gave me the sign. But I got to give him his testimony. Amen. Amen. Oh, give thanks. I give God all the praise. Many of you know my story. But, well, not my story so much as it is my husband's story. How God delivered him. Two years ago, he was in the hospital for COVID. Y'all already know the story about our late superintendent and our district missionary. Y'all already know all three of them in the hospital at the same time. Many of you didn't know because I went to God on my face and on my knees. And I came with a praise. I thank God for what he shed tears. I thank God for how he brought us out. And I thank God for what he shed doing in his people. My husband was in the hospital for almost five months. In Savannah, y'all. Couldn't go see him. When they put him on a respirator, he was on the life support for over 50 days. The doctor said, I don't know because he's going to come off this respirator. And I said, but God. I started giving God the praise. I started giving him the praise. He was on a respirator. They tried to take him off, and we don't know every time they said no. So they had to trach him. They put a trach in him. They said, he, we don't know if he's going to make it. His kidneys began to shut down. They put him on dialysis. His everything, his body began to swell. He was two, three times bigger than what he normally was. But I started giving thanks. I gave God the praise. I thank God for what He had done. I thank God for the life that He showed me. I gave God the praise. They sent him to a one hospital in Savannah to another hospital in Savannah. The lady called me. She said, "Miss Stewart." They husband here to die. I said, the devil is alive. He's going to live and not die to declare the works of God. Amen. Amen. I thank God for what God did. By being in the hospital, he stood and stayed in that hospital two running in a big old woman a size of a loaf or a sandwich bread. A woman on his stomach on his goosing and goosing. They didn't know what to expect. But God, but I still gave him thanks. But I said all that to say, God did it for me. When he came out the hospital, first thing he said, I got to go to church. I got to give God the praise. Y'all know church was still closed down in 2021, right? So we found the church. We went all the way to Atlanta to go to church. He was in a wheelchair because he couldn't walk. I wheeled him in a church.
Come and call the name. Father, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father. Lord, we thank you now. We thank you for these like grateful people, oh God. This wonderful service, oh God, that have come today, rendered themselves unto you, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that's rained down upon us now. God, we ask you to come to more right now. Come to more in our midst. Come into our presence. Continue to cover us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we honor you, we glorify you, and we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your kindness, and your mercy, which endure it for all generations. Lord, we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can take your seats. Amen. Because, amen, the reason I told, amen, missionary stewards to just let God work is because I'm coming having words. I'm not going to be here long. I didn't come to be long. Amen. I, 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 knew, I knew how to move with the Spirit of God. And God has already spoken and said, I just have to finish what she said. I wasn't going to say anything, but I have to finish what, I, what she said because I was already getting ready to say it. And she confirmed that it needed to be said. But I do want to say thank you. Uh, without trying to rush, but yet rushing, amen, we want to give God the glory. Yes. We're just so grateful today. Amen. I want to thank, thank God for these pastors on the Foresight District. Amen. That I can praise God. I just went to them and talked to them and said it was a short notice, but I knew we wanted to close out the year in a, in a unity fashion. And they just jumped on board. They adjusted their schedule. And everything fell in place. Amen. Because I really wanted to see us close out this year together. A sign of the unity. I am so grateful for what has taken place on the Foresight District. And God knows, I say, in a short period of time. But that couldn't be done with me. It took us. Amen. Oh, God. And what Bishop said, are we better together? Oh, yes, we're better together. We're so much better together. And we can accomplish so much more, more together. And I want to say this before I get into a word. Amen. Amen. We cherish this season. I remember in Korea when we started out the church over there, we removed the church from one location to another, grouped the people together, and, and, and they started the church. And there was a leader that had been in the church a while. And he came and he told us that Alfred, he said, You all cherish what you have right now because there's only one new beginning. He said, cherish the fellowship you have. That because when you leave this, if you ever leave this, it's going to be hard to duplicate. And I promise you, this is the closest I got to it, and that's almost 20 years ago. Amen. The closest I've gotten to the realness of the ministry, yes. where the ministry is serious, yes. where they get love. You have fun. We enjoy one another. But the ministry is real. Yes. Amen. Not about bureaucracy. Not about ideology. Not about big eyes and little youth. It's about the glory of the Lord. Yes. But we can go to the part where it's dusty and dirty and reach the people in the masses. Yes. We can go across town and feed the abundance. Yes. We can stand in the back parking lot here and let God have his way. Let me tell y'all. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to get the honor of you. But this testimony is on my mind right now. A few weeks ago, I was coming up and I said, Lord, I really need this lock cut back here. I had had some people cut it for me and it just grew up because they just cut it. And I said, Lord, I don't know how to get this done. I need to find someone to, to do it. I went home and I think it was a week and a half later, I came up the hill, my wife and I driving, and we looked and we could see the church from way down there. We said, wait a minute. I'm saying to myself, I'm getting nervous because when people cut stuff, they cut it because they own it. I said, wait a minute. Somebody done claim, because I, I think I told y'all the testimony, we, we wanted the lot. 
And two years ago, instead of buying it, somebody bought it and gave it to us. They would, and, 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 and I thought I was upset because I thought they had, I sent the man down to the town to pay for the lot to, to so that they were being on it. Yeah. And when they got there, they had already bought it, and I was upset. I was like, "How did this happen?" I told the clerk I wanted it. She knew it was mine, and she when I called, she said, "Don't worry." He does this all the time, but he's going to buy it and give it to you. Thank you, Jesus. And he, and he bought it. And he deeded it over to us. And I was trying to make sure that wasn't, it means some, somebody got confused about it. So, so what happened is, I went on and I said, Lord, I don't know who to cut this lock. So I got up here one day and I took the video, I got the camera outside and just rolled the camera back so I could see who did it. And I saw it was a, 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 a tree clearing company. And I called them up and I said, well, I see you did this, but I just, I thank you, and, and, but I need to know why. And he said, well, sir, I was paid by the guy down the street to cut his side. He said, but when I cut it, I looked at yours, it just didn't look right to leave yours. So we just came up there and cut yours. They just cut they, they cut it three. I didn't ask them, but I told God about it. Yeah. And, 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 and Chris Street, as my witness, they know that I went into this thing about when we pray now, I'm telling, I'm thanking God for what I want. Yeah. I, I'm stop asking. I'm thanking you for my ministry. Yeah. I'm thanking you for my financial people. I'm thanking you for my I'm thanking God when, when I go on prayer that I'm claiming it. Yeah. I'm no longer asking, I'm claiming it. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And I'm on that kick now when I thank him. And, 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 and then and then he did it. And, and I said, well, sir, you know you have a customer because I said I want a business. I don't want no more shade tree people. I don't want no more side people. Come no, on. I'm coming near this church again. Come on, come on. Nobody, if they, listen, whatever y'all going to do, I don't care if it look like too much money, make sure you get somebody qualified. You don't get nobody, amen, unless they totally qualified. They got a business, not, 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 not a certificate. And so I took, he gave me the break, and he's going to set up where he'll cut, cut it twice a year for me. He'll come in and cut it twice a year. All because... We begin to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I do want to say thank you to our church brothers. Amen. Because, listen, first I guess, if there's anything that you, you know about me, you're going to know I love my church mothers. I love the mothers of the church. And I want the district. The reason that we came together is because I'm a stickler for this. You don't wait to the new year to set your vision in place. You set your vision before you get there. Right. If you wait till next year to get there to do your vision, you're already behind. All right. So we're coming together so we can launch. The program that you have is the format that we will be having our services from now on. This is the way we'll be. When we come, we're going to make sure we hear from our mother. We're going to hear from our first lady. We're going to hear from our children. And we're going to hear from our pastor. Because this is not my district. The vision that God has shared for me for the year of 2023, he said 2023 is the year of the people. Yes. 2023 is the year of the people. Amen? Amen? Because God has spoken. If we don't be concerned about his people, it's going to be a wrap up on the leaders. It's time for us to consider the heart soul, and bodies of the people of Christ. Yeah. Amen? Amen? If you ever see me that sound like I'm pushing, it's not because I don't consider you. I want to see the best come out of you. Yeah. I want to see the best delivered out of you. I want to see you stand above everybody else. I want to see you stand above all else and give God your best in what you can do. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I've taken the last two years for this jurisdiction. And I've worked myself day and night, sacrificed for my wife, sat in the corner to try to bring 
dignity back to the secretary office, dignity back to the credential process to make sure that the leaders and the people in this jurisdiction are get the right things. And it took me two trips to Memphis, not the jurisdiction, but me paying to go. But we have conquered that. Right. We have cleared it up. Everything's a ticket to get back. Credentials are caught up. Your cars are on the way. It took us because you got to start caring about God's people. you got to start caring about us. Because if we care about God's people, God's people will care about us. That's what God has called us to do. Take care of them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Sister, Missionary Stewart, though, a few weeks, a few years, a year ago, all they were doing was paying money, getting over you know, credentials. She got a credential last year, the first year. Don't want to happen. Coach, in you know, a few minutes, we're going to recognize someone. All because it's worth it, saints. I'm not here talking about me. I'm talking about what God has called for this season. God has called for this time. And God is moving forward to it. And we're moving forward. I did not want to go to them. But I said to myself, all the nights I stayed up and let my wife be sitting in the room and I'm working it up and end up, he said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? He'll let you do all you're doing and end up losing what you work for. But you got to stick it out. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for our mother. I thank God for my wife. I praise God for her because she has sacrificed. But not for me to serve the people of God. And I stand here today because I want to continue to serve you. Yes. I've given all as much as I can. We're finally building a staff at the state level for the secretary. We should be working it out. But I thank God that it took no work hard because this district, I thank God for Brother Blackman, Brother Brooks, because. They step in and they move. Listen, if we don't have an usher, we don't have a bit, if we don't have a drummer, we don't have a choir player, they'll do it. They'll do it. Because they know that's what it's going to take. If I don't have it, we're going to keep doing it to God's city. Because this is God's work. He said it is marvelous in his sight. God is going to supply everything you need, pastors. God's going to make sure everything as long as you take care of God's people, God's going to take care of you. He's going to provide for you. He's going to give you everything you need to do your job. Because we can tell him about it. Yes, sir. And I want to thank God. Listen, you don't have to just, just make sure that dirt is available on Tuesday. I was wondering how I was going to get up there. I wanted to come on Monday. And I said, Lord, and now my calendar popped up full on Monday. But they told me on Tuesday that we don't have to go to the office none this week. Right. We can work from home. I said, Lord, thank you, Jesus. So I, I will, my wife, I'm praying because my daughter, if she'll let us ride, we'll be up to see Dad on Tuesday. And we're coming to share with him. These pastors, I told them that we wanted to have this meeting because I wanted to do something special. And they rallied with me, and they didn't say, well, whatever we put in the offer. They said, they came and said, Pastor, we're going to give you from our own pocket, we're going to give you something, and you go up there and hand it to them from every church on the district. All right. We're coming to see about it. We're coming to see about that dirty. We, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. I thank God for you standing beside your father. We've been working this relationship since about a month before his mother passed. And we've gotten closer since that happened. And we just push it. And we're there. And we will be there. Because I can see something good happen. And for, 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 for Bill, I got to get that name right. Amen. I can see good happening in that community. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because... The Bible said going to the highways and the hedges. Yeah. The highways and the hedges. Yeah. Everybody done flock to the city, but they forgot about the highways and hedges. Right. And that's what God's people are suffering at. So let us prepare, and I will be up to see you all. Amen. We'll be there. I want to share this one scripture with you because I want to finish what 
uh, missionary steward started. And because I shared this this morning, and God gave this to me Tuesday morning in our prayer session, Revelation 12. Revelation 12, and then not 12 and 11. I want to read this scripture to you. It says this, and they overcame yes. him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimonies, and they loved not their lives unto the devil. Evangelist Stewart, when she got up and gave that testimony, amen, I knew then this is what God was saying, because the blood has already been shed. God has done his part, but the church has stopped telling the goodness of the Lord. The testimony we overcome, but here's why they stopped. When I look up the definition, amen, and look at the word, because deceiving word out of Brooks, he said they overcame him. Yeah. Now you need to understand who they're talking to. These are the, uh, and then the ones, there was a war in heaven. And there was a battle going on. And they got, the, 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 it say they got cast out. And the angels, they overcame. We talk about the, the, the 144,000 that we saw. Notice what it said, they overcame. The problem we have with the church right now is we're trying to live off somebody else's testimony. Come on, come on. The testimony of our forefathers said they overcame. How many know that overcame is it, it, it means it's already happened? It's already done. Yeah. We're communicating the word wrong. We have not overcame. We're overcomers. That's it. See, we're overcomers. And what happened is we stopped working because we feel we overcame. See, you, we have not overcame. We still got to battle and fight. We still got to work. We still got to put up and pray. When they said that he's gone, you got to get up and say, not so. Because you have not overcame. You're overcoming. Praise the holy name. Look at the name that we're overcomers. We're overcomers. Why are we overcomers? We overcome. When we found a district, lose the superintendent and the district missionary, and they think everything was coming apart. Uh, less than six months later, and then not only that, the preacher's in the hospital. Six months later, the next church, the church mother and the leader passes. Thank you, Jesus. But because they overcame, but we were overcomers. We overcome us. Whatever comes, we keep on going. Whatever coming, we keep pushing things. Don't stop now. Don't turn around. We got to keep on pushing. Keep on moving. Keep on striving. Thank you, Jesus. Don't worry. Don't worry about the accolade. Don't worry about the pat on the back. Don't worry about the new position. Don't worry about the title. Keep on going. Yeah. 
You got to go past every obstacle. Because he said you overcome. You, they said, we, are over, we overcame. But that was their past tense because they did it. We're overcomers. Foresight district. Leave here today. Knowing that whatever rises, we're overcomers. There's nothing too hard for us. We can help with the Lord on our side. We're here because God has placed us through adverse situations. Challenging situations. But we're here together. And we're closing out this year. I feel as strong as we could be with the peace we have. And Al Arline has sent me a text. I will get that text out to everybody and let you know what time they're going to be there. Everybody from the district that can go over and help them on the way. On the way. To help them. Because when they went to the park and before it's like, we on the way. Whatever's going on, we on the way. Listen, I made my mind up. And I clearly let you know, I'm not worried about the ones that's not coming along. I'm not worried. I promise you. Only reason I do push them is because why? It's going to hurt them. Those that don't oh, keep going, don't be a part, it's going to hurt them. It's not going to hurt you. I'm trying to push them so they can get their reward. That they can get their blessings. Because there's something good coming out of this month. There's something good. Because as I close and I look at my 88-year-old church mother, they have stayed on the wall. Done worked and worked. I refuse to let her labor be in vain. I refuse to let dad walk to the work they did being made. Amen. We are different ministry now. Yeah. You may not feel the pews, yeah. but you can feel the kingdom. Amen. You may not be able to feel the houses, but you can feel the kingdom. Amen. And that's what's first on our list is feeling the kingdom. We thank God. And I want to.